At Woolwich Crown Court, Kokoli is facing her first challenge. Her client's ex-girlfriend is afraid of coming face to face with him in court. So the problem that we have is the court has allowed her to have something called special measures so she can give her evidence via video link or a screen. And I was given very, very late notice of this. And so I'm going to object because I don't think she's in fear. And certainly, um, you know, we deny, we deny the offence in its entirety and we think it's very prejudicial to, for my client. Um, and although it, it's not uh, the case that it's not a fair trial if he can't see his accuser, it's certainly prejudicial in the eyes of the jury because they'll think, oh, well, you know, she must be very scared because she can't be in the same room as him. So we want to sort of uh, remove that possible um, prejudice towards my client. The ultimate experience for a criminal barrister is a jury trial. A jury trial has a frisson, has an experience which other trials don't. You are dealing with 12 members of the public. You really feel you are using your advocacy. I had a great friend. First, uh, and up to the 10th the jury trial she did, she was physically sick every time before she went to court. And she really had to say, I can't do the job. I'm feeling excited about it, actually, because it's been a long time coming. I've done a lot of work preparing for this trial, and the day has come where um, suddenly you have to, you know, realise this ambition. The atmosphere is very different in, in a Crown Court and the work that you are undertaking is, is more complicated so the responsibility is greater, the pressure is greater because a person's liberty is really at stake because for the offences with which my client is charged he will go straight into custody if he is um, found guilty of that, of, of those offences but um, my heart's beating very, very fast. Like almost all defendants in criminal trials, Kokoli's client will have his fees paid for by the state. But there is no legal aid available for Lillian, and so far, her battle with the authorities has cost her £70,000 wonderful performance on the part of our barrister and uh, a great atmosphere in the courtroom. It's really gripping. You could probably get addicted to this kind of thing. And it's very hopeful for the people of rugby that, you know, we will see some environmental justice. It's been seven years of a battle and I think we've got a fantastic legal team, um, Owen David and the others, and we are very hopeful that they've managed to get the justice that we so urgently need. <laughs> I get that Oscar. <laughs> and thank you, Tessa. Bless you. Thanks so much. You've worn out, but you've got sinus. It's all this. Well, let's go and track that down, then. I'm going to track my daughter down now. She's down here. Tessa, thanks a lot. Bye, Bye. Appreciate it. Bye, David. Bye. 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 There are five judges, and we've got different reactions from each of them. Um, some gave more away than others, but even then you can always misread. I mean, the impression we had is that um, one of them was much more sympathetic than the others and one was much less sympathetic than the others. But um, as I say, you can always misread that and, and their minds might be changed by the others when they talk about it. It will take three months for the law lords to deliver their opinions and for Lillian to discover whether her money was well spent. I think this is a very important thing that might come out of this case is that they've got to revise the, the system in England so that more people can have access to justice and not be just, um, you know, left to fund it all out of their own pocket. You know, for people, ordinary people to start up a judicial review, where are they going to get £70,000 or £100,000 from? And also it's the risk that you could lose your whole house. So you're going to think twice about it, even if you're absolutely 100% convinced you're right. This year, a record number of students have been called to the bar. Iqbal Mohammed has passed his exams and has even lined up a pupillage. But only tonight will he finally become a barrister 
at a call ceremony in Middle Temple, one of the four inns of court. Wow. I have got a big head. This may be the only time Iqbal wears a wig and gown because he wants to practice in family law and traditional costume isn't used by barristers in those courts. On the one hand, you have the, you know, the tradition and the very special customs of the English legal bar, which is very special compared to continental Europe. You know, we invented the common law system. But on the other hand, it is a bit silly, isn't it? It's a bit theatrical and a bit dressing up. But I mean, I think we should have robes like this, and I, I, I quite like the bands, but I think the wig, I think, maybe is a bit antiquated. My lords, I propose this case is a lot of bollocks. It must be dismissed. Wigs and gowns are seen by many as a very visible symbol of an outdated profession, but some chambers are keen to project a much more modern image. Matrix is home to David Wolfe and his pupil, Elizabeth Pachaska. Matrix um, has about six different colours, is that right, David? How yeah. many colours does Matrix have? Matrix is... Well, let me do it. Come. It has these colours, um, which it puts on all its letterhead and stationery, and then throughout the building... Um, the walls all match the colours. The walls match the colours, so our meeting rooms each have one wall in a certain colour. Branding. So corporate identity. Um, Matrix was set up by, uh, it was then 23 barristers. We had initially 23 barristers and about six or seven staff, people who wanted to have a more modern way of organising themselves. So whether that's a more modern building, a more modern approach to employing staff, um, using different terminology, a different way of dealing with clients, all of those things, really a common theme around getting away to some extent from the old bar way of doing things, um, behaving, um, thinking of ourselves as a, as a business rather than um, anything else and then, and then seeing that through in various practical ways that you see around this building and how we, I think, organise. Um, I think the more modern chambers have started to get more into marketing because they realise that in the current climate where there's less work for barristers or different types of work for barristers, they really need to sell themselves more than perhaps they used to. The colours change here, you know that? The colours around here change. I haven't noticed that. Here, read the newspapers. Matrix has uh, what well, uses different language from other barristers' chambers. Um, so we don't have clerks, uh, we have practice assistants, um, we don't have pupils, we have trainees. Um, matrix is matrix, it's not chambers. It's part of a whole range of things which are about um, being a, a modern service industry. We, are, we provide a legal service, we're not some antiquated um, uh, highfalutin uh, activity that goes on behind the scenes. We are providing a service as do solicitors, surveyors, accountants and so on. Um, and I think we should behave like that. We should have a modern office which is what clients now expect. We should have um, we should talk to people in language they understand. We shouldn't use jargon to describe our meetings. We shouldn't use um, jargon to describe the kind of processes we're, we're involved in because we alienate our clients. Pressure to change the bar is growing all the time. Government is seeking major changes to the structure and funding of the entire legal profession. The man negotiating on behalf of all barristers is Chairman of the Bar Council, Tim Dutton QC. When I first became a barrister, I, I didn't think I would be um, Chairman of the Bar. Um, but I did always think I would be fighting cases, and uh, I don't think you can be a good chairman of the bar without knowing how to fight a case. Um, so it's quite useful to keep my hand in. I get my nerves are all, I'm, I'm sort of all there, all engaged. Um, I don't go around shaking, but um, I still have that pre-court tension in the same way that an actor would before going on stage, or a musician would. And without it, I think you lose your edge. But I've also got to eat a few biscuits before I've got no time for brekkie yet. 